good evening from Bogor. Bogor is a city just south of Jakarta and I'm gonna do my walk tomorrow in Bogor. So for this it's kind of a little bit far from Jakarta so I'm not gonna take a bus or something so I'm staying here tonight and I just want to show you something. So this is Red Horse, it's quite common here in Indonesia, you find, uh, find it very often. The one thing about this place is uh, Red Horse Sharia. So it means this is like in a Muslim way, halal, so you cannot come here. You have to be careful if you come to Indonesia and you're taking your girlfriend with you and you're not married, you live uh, on different addresses. And when you come here, they're asking you for IDs to check that you have both the same address and uh, a wedding certificate would be the best too. It even says here in uh, Indonesian that uh, you have to show your ID and uh, Nika means married. So yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's how it works. So just be careful when you're coming here. Uh, my wife and her parents, they just dropped me off here with a car. I checked in. She uh, just was here to translate. Uh, this is my uh, hotel room. Say no to drugs, alcohol, weapons, no smoking, no durian because it's so smelly. Uh, yeah, so my wife was basically here and uh, just if they asked me anything, so she would be here for translation. And uh, they asked her, they asked her ID right away and they asked her if she has a wedding certificate with her, if she's staying with me, because it's common that uh, there would be a Western guy find, I don't know, like a girl to have fun with uh, for the night and bring her to a hotel room. So this is not a place where this is acceptable. So they're not gonna let you in if you're not married and you can't prove it. So be careful when you're booking, where you're booking. And uh, if it's the case, you're coming with a girlfriend, don't be surprised if you book uh, here and they don't let you in, okay? Well, and then I want to show you my bedroom here. It's a nice comfy bed. I don't know how, it's not like perfectly clean this place. It's uh, only 10 euro for a night. So this is the room. You even have a TV. You get two bottles of water. The rest is mine. There's uh, one important thing for me that I have enough plugs to charge all my stuff. There's even a, uh, another extending cord with uh, more sockets so I could use and even here so very important the AC is running and working so this is good actually a nice place it's quite clean the bathroom is uh, okay looks good clean I think everything's working there's even hot water which you often don't get when you're here in Indonesia they would just have like uh, Cold water, I mean it's not like too cold, but it's cold, it's not heated at all and uh, sometimes it's just a little bit uh, chilly when you have a shower after a hot day outside. So I like to stay at, uh, so far I stayed in a couple of these that booked at Red Horse and it's uh, quite uh, affordable, always around 10 euro a night and I know what I get and I don't need anything uh, crazy like nice and uh, spending too much money on the hotels because I'm leaving here mostly sometimes even before 5 in the morning so I just need a bed to sleep and uh, that's all I don't even need breakfast I don't need uh, because I wouldn't have time for it so red doors if you just need a uh, bed for the night just look that it's not uh, Sharia and uh, on reddoors.com even cheaper than on booking and these other uh, pages so not bad Good morning, the night is over. It's uh, 5 uh, 50 in the morning, and I'm starting my walk here in the southernmost point in Bogor. I have some uh, guys asking me what I'm doing here. It's uh, probably not that common to see a Western guy. Salamat <laughs> Pagi. So I'm starting my walk here, and uh, yeah, they are quite uh, surprised somebody wants to walk all through the city. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Let's get going. About 30 kilometers ahead of us. Often when you're 
walking here, not even just only at the edge of these cities. It looks like, like you're in a village somewhere. It could be any small village uh, somewhere around here on top of the volcano. But we are actually in the city of Bogor. And Bogor is uh, another satellite city of Jakarta. So basically now I'm uh, covering the last uh, city with over 1 million people here in uh, Jakarta of the Jabot Tetabek area. So I walk through Bekasi, Depok, Tangerang South, Tangerang, Jakarta itself as the capital city and the major city, Salat Pagi, and now Bogor as the last one. And Bogor is the smallest city of all of them. It just uh, surpassed uh, 1 million people in the last decade, so it has about uh, 1 million 50,000 people living here. And uh, many people from Jakarta like to come out here for some uh, like nice activities here up on the volcano slopes. There's many things to do for people from Jakarta. Uh, a lot of them buy houses here, somewhere up on the hills. There's some really nice neighborhoods here for rich people. And uh, the only thing is, uh, it's raining a lot here. So every day you can expect rain. That's why, again, I'm uh, starting really early. Hopefully by the time the first rain comes, I don't know, around two or three in the afternoon, I covered a lot of, uh, lot of my uh, tour today. And I'm uh, somewhere like where I almost want to be. And if it's raining, just, uh, go undercover for an hour then mostly the rain slows down and I can continue so we'll see how the day is gonna be now it's uh, pretty nice here in the morning very calm it's a beautiful time to start the day what a beautiful village here so nice look at these bananas on the slope here the village down in the valley. I'm on 480 meters above sea level. It's kind of here really on the mountain and I'm gonna just be going down for at least 10 kilometers I'm in the city. So I'm pretty sure there's gonna be some nice views from different spots. Salamat pagi. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Thank you. So I somehow managed to find uh, some really nice uh, routes from like walking through the city, not just major roads. And I'm pretty sure some of these uh, places I'm coming to, I'm just uh, on an unfinished house here, overlooking this village. This in the back up there is uh, Mount Salak. It's an eroded volcano. So I hope no volcano eruption here today. And down here in the valley is Bogor. So we finding our way through these uh, lush forests and the villages here in Bogor. So far, really nice. All the roosters you can hear, the day starting, people getting out on the streets, the children, but still it's a nice place here to walk. Very quiet and this is how it works here in the villages. There's no probably way to get rid of your garbage. I don't even know if they have any pickup, so you just dump it down the hill. That's how it works in many countries. Sampagi, you want to say hello? <laughs> Always the kids amazed, walking slowly behind me, laughing, laughing, laughing. Yeah, that's how life is in these villages. I just scared a little chick looking away. Well, I hope I can walk through here. Google says there's a shortcut. We'll see. Sometimes it's really... Oh yeah, 
there are some stairs going down because the road is going around but you never know if you can trust trust Google it often doesn't work out in Indonesia because just uh, it's the end of the road there's a gate or something so you gotta be careful but in this case thanks Google for the shortcut Hey. So I would have had to walk around, come here, then continue here, so it was a nice little shortcut. <coughs> but as you see, I'm walking through like this area, but it's kind of more like a dirt road than a real road. More garbage here in the small river. See the road here, how it's going up. It's quite muddy, dirty. Look at this bamboo here. It's so crazy. So big, huge. There's some nice lush green corn, banana, palms, and the Mount Salak in the background. The whole area here is quite rural, so I assume all people here live from, from I don't know, farming, whatever, corn, they have some animals, chickens, uh, chicken farms, I guess, uh, cassava plantations, and so it's really rural. I don't know if uh, some people probably do work in the city, but as you see, like, everybody has a piece of land here, and uh, some papaya trees. I'm pretty sure it's kind of like more uh, they have their own food they grow their own food and uh, don't have to buy that much stuff obviously you have to buy nowadays many things but yeah, it's very rural so this here is a cassava plant they use the roots for uh, making cassava flour I don't know if you guys know about it uh, and it's very common here in Indonesia they make even noodles from uh, cassava and these uh, the young leaves up on top here I don't know like might be even like the really really young ones like this here they boil and uh, it goes with your meal it's kind of something like um, just like spinach or something it's actually it's actually delicious I like it I eat it very often so a very productive plant I would say because you can use a uh, like the leaves and the roots and so it's a good thing this here would be a papaya plant and uh, it just got uh, picked off uh, recently I can see the cuts so there's no papayas on here anymore but it's flowering on the bigger plant up there so there's gonna be more just growing higher and higher and uh, it's gonna bear more papayas Just crossing the highway here from, from this side basically to go west. The last time I was here, the highway here wasn't even built. So they're extending this highway going south, kind of over the, the volcanoes, one to the left and Mansala to the right. So it's a good thing for Bogor now, there's uh, not all the traffic goes through the city, so a little bit east for the city and the people. Now in the morning it's not as busy here as you can see, but the highway looks good. Hey, back on the road. This here is the entrance to a really nice uh, neighborhood, gated community. You see the gates, they're probably closed at night. And there's golf courses up on the top of this uh, hill many lots i still think uh, many even available to buy and build like villas it's a nice place and it's called summit you can see because it's on top of this hill here we have even like uh, 
discount to buy, I guess, houses and uh, it's really nice. The whole uh, road is uh, green, lush, uh, really uh, well taken care of and uh, then again you just cross the road and you go back into the uh, like kampung villages. It's really interesting how they uh, build these uh, new neighborhoods for the rich people. So this year they're developing this year because uh, because it's uh, just next to the highway. I just crossed the highway. So for for the rich people to buy houses, come out from Jakarta, and even here you can see it's uh, kind of nice housing. And the reason why it's uh, the land is here valuable and people building these uh, modern communities with uh, golf resorts and big houses, uh, nice roads, is because you're in two minutes, you're on the highway and you can uh, access Jakarta easily. You can go to the airport if you're running some businesses and so it's uh, quite good connection to Jakarta and if you have to go from here into the city center from Bogor it's probably gonna take you the same time just to get to the city because the roads are so narrow here poor this one goes this is the fastest connection down to the city center and if you're taking these kind of roads and when it gets uh, when there's a lot of traffic you can hardly fit past another car here so that's why it's uh, strategic to be at the, at the highway. This here is called erosion. Look at this here. The road is basically been washed away and the fence here is just hanging in the air. There's like literally probably like two meters of uh, soil just uh, washed away. And it's been like this for a long time. And as you see, like you're just coming up this road and if there's another truck coming your way you have to get uh, close to the edge things can happen here in Indonesia just because the roads are really in a shitty yeah, condition everywhere so you gotta be very careful going down the hill I mean it's not a nothing would happen but still this is how the roads in Indonesia are being taken care of the best thing about Indonesia, you can always get what you need. So on the road, I'm having just a small uh, little shop, some pagi, <laughs> having my coffee. And the same goes for anything else you need. Uh, at most times during the day, I'm pretty sure even at night there's something open. Uh, you can get something to eat, you can get uh, something to drink. And even if you're running out of uh, fuel, don't worry. There's always somebody selling fuel in bottles on the side of the road. So pretty easy to get uh, a hand on things here in, in Indonesia. This is the gas station I was hey, talking about. Yeah, gas yeah. station in Indonesia. <laughs> you see, it's just in a water bottle. You have your gasoline. So you never have to worry if there's no gas station around. You'll find in any of these villages every like couple hundred meters there's somebody selling, selling fuel. Very convenient. I just want to show you how children here, I think they're not even the one driving, she's probably like six, the one behind five, something like this. They have like these uh, little, uh, I don't know if they're electro scooters, but they can ride on the road. My wife said uh, they even go to school and just in the regular traffic, it's uh, allowed. So you can be in this crazy traffic around here and they're allowed to do this. Which is kind of crazy to think about if my daughter was five or six to let her drive by herself. I just want to show you from here, like up on the hill over there, there's a really big, big uh, house or villa. And what often is the case, it's like somebody from Jakarta or somebody who has money, they build these villas around here. So basically this is the neighborhood I was showing you before with the nice road, the entrance, and I'm just kind of on the opposite hill going down to the city. So they own this place 
they use it for themselves, but you see it's quite big. And then for like weekends and especially for Ramadan and uh, holidays, longer weekends, uh, they rent these uh, places here. So a family from Jakarta could come out here like with their extended family, like with 20 people, 25, doesn't matter. So there's so many rooms in there. It's all set up for a big family to have a little vacation up here in the mountains with a pool mostly, like with some uh, additional facilities and stuff. And then you can go around a little bit hiking, driving around, do some stuff here around Bogor, many activities for families and children to do. So yeah, here you're like in this uh, village, quite uh, just a common like kampong, bed roads, and then you have uh, the other hill with golf course, uh, huge villas and uh, rich people staying there. And I think uh, my wife, she told me, or the basic idea was when we were coming here to go on a weekend with her family and rent a place like this. And I think it's, uh, I think it's around 500 euro for the weekend, if I'm not wrong. But you also can come there with 20 people and uh, have it for two days. So they mostly share the expenses between the families. And uh, so it's, yeah, I think around 500 euro for the whole weekend. But because we were yeah, too late to book, there's uh, difficult to get anything for the, for the Idul Fitri weekend. I just passed by a Chinese cemetery. So I decided to have a look. And... Uh, if you remember in any of my uh, videos and even today there's a small house with some Muslim graves in front of the house this stuff here is huge the Muslim cemeteries are mostly simple the graves like one meter by two meters and then you have something like this it's uh, all fenced in there's like I don't know if uh, like how many people maybe like a whole family but I'm not quite sure but still this is like a size of property like for a house and then you have a little pagoda here like all this uh, little things I don't know what it is for here some of you guys might know who have a uh, are Chinese or have Chinese uh, ancestors how it actually works when a Chinese is buried but this is uh, really like expensive to have something like this and uh, yeah they're beautiful but like huge huge and the cemetery cemetery is just uh, amazing like it's uh, in a really nice place here up on this hill and then you have uh, like it goes all down here and then the view on Mount Salak just uh, a really nice place for a cemetery and every time I go to a city and uh, I know I just started my YouTube now I should have uh, like long time ago I've been to many places in the world already I remember from Japan and somewhere I think I read if you want to have a nice look on a city you just go on a cemetery and this is true I was uh, in Kyoto and some other cities and then you go up in the cemeteries and uh, the view often is just amazing like this one here something special really special I'm just standing here next to the river and actually I have to cross the rail to go up into the city but there's a place called Mi Mafia and the pictures of the food are kind of interesting so I want to go into this neighborhood town uh, take the little road here to the left and see if this place is even open. I think I have the time today, I'm quite good. So check it out and uh, see if I can eat there. Selamat pagi! <laughs> the only problem with this neighborhood is that it's cut off, so I have to come back here. And if uh, the place is closed, I'm just walking kind of like 300 meters down to the river. I just check it out. If not, I'll return the same way I came from and not buggy. Like 
well this is the place and uh, these guys are cooking you can tell but I think uh, they're probably just doing uh, food to deliver no place to sit outside nobody here it says it's open but sometimes yeah I just want to check it out uh, doesn't matter like I said I have the time wanted to see the neighborhood actually kind of nice houses this car looks like uh, I don't know 80s in the States kind of pretty cool and let's head back to the rail and cross into the city well I have been many times in Indonesia so far and uh, I don't know what this is nor do I know what this route here is it look actually quite interesting some pineapples easy a lot of bananas pumpkins but then like this fruit here I have no clue what it is some uh, avocados this here looks almost like a peach but again not sure this stuff I don't know and this is a really huge jackfruit so this one Indonesians really like a lot to cook with this one I know many more bananas to sell here but interesting place just to show you how many different uh, fruits and stuff they have here in Indonesia and uh, I still don't know what they are just entering another neighborhood here which is very densely populated and very narrow roads let's hope I'll get to the bridge I'm looking for Selamat pagi you can see how everything is uh, the stairs going down down very narrow alleyways up here <laughs> hello hello hello, hello. <laughs> so yeah it's gonna be uh, tough to find the way through Selamat pagi Selamat pagi Selamat pagi. <laughs> but interesting place here. I think yeah, you can use probably you can use a small scooter. They made these uh, little ramps up here, but would be very hard to go through here. So mostly just pedestrian friendly, I guess. Oh, this is, yeah, this is a papaya tree. It's just uh, young papayas starting to grow. This one is flowering up here. They're gonna grow and once they're ripe, you can harvest them. Selamat pagi! Yeah. So let's go through this place here. There's uh, this river down here and there should be a bridge almost feels like in the in the favelas in uh, Rio de Janeiro like kind of terraces and houses like one above each other just uh, continuous houses so let's see if the bridge is gonna be here and I can cross here I hope so. I think so. So, Paggy. Paggy. Okay. Let's go down. You can really easily get lost in these uh, in these kampongs if you don't have a good orientation. You don't know how to use maps. Sometimes they're not as uh, useful, but. The easiest way would be to have a local get you, navigate you through these uh, little streets. Like I say, there's so many possibilities to go left, go right, go any direction, so you can easily just get lost here. But well, I am where I wanted to be. This little bridge is uh, kind of the one place you can cross from one side to another. And just to show you how these uh, 
neighborhoods, all these houses here in this uh, valley here, kind of constructed just above the river and just goes up, up. Same goes for here, like go up the stairs and it goes all the way up to the hill, all these houses. It's quite, quite packed here, so dense. Selamat pagi. <laughs> well, some people like to complain that they cannot access their house with a car that the way to the bus station is far and then you have to think about these people here they have to use these stairs every day to get to their houses for them it's just like the thing they don't even think about to use the stairs <laughs> And when you live in conditions like this and you have to use these stairs, you have no car, you have no motorbike. It's just, uh, yeah, just uh, one part of your daily routine. And it's not hard, you don't think anything of it. So, Paggy, you just do it. And it's not hard. So, Paggy. <laughs> oh, nice oranges. Marketplace. Very busy market here. Salat pagi, salat pagi. So without even knowing, I just came out on this uh, street in the city, which seems to be Chinatown for me. But why not? Uh, like we have seen this uh, Chinese cemetery up there on the hill and I just looked up there's about 2% of the people in Bogor are Chinese so yeah why not have a Chinatown here I'm in another neighborhood here, very densely populated, very narrow streets. I want to cross the second river here, it's the Chiliwong River. But... Huh? Left, left! Terima kasih, terima kasih! He knows what I'm looking for! <laughs> terima kasih! Yeah, very difficult in this... Uh, to see the light at the end of the tunnel, that's kind of the most important thing. If it's uh, very dark, just means uh, that's the end and that's just some entrance to the house. Salamat pagi. <laughs> oh, I am here at the bridge. It was easier than I thought it would be. <laughs> Salamat pagi. <laughs> so we are at the river. This uh, same river going through here from Bogor, from the mountains. It's like people in this uh, slum area washing the clothes down there. I guess you know what the river serves for. Mostly garbage, fishing, washing their clothes. And then kids down here taking a swim, jumping in the water. The only thing I would be worried about, it's not the... I don't think it's uh, that dirty that you can swim in here. It's just... Uh, now it's, I think, more just uh, the mud and, uh, from the last night's rain. But what I would be worried is all the garbage and all the sharp objects with, which could be in there. And uh, these kids jumping in barefoot, swimming, and yeah, just cutting your, cutting your foot would be the one thing uh, I would be mostly worried about. 
and this place here I don't know if you can see the village it's called Kampung Visata Labyrinth so it's like a maze just um, has a good name for it because when you're walking through these uh, kampongs it's so hard to find your way through this uh, like literally like I said before it's uh, like in the favelas of Rio it's house to house to house and just uh, small alleyways in between left right left right uh, kind of you really get uh, confused and uh, lost easily so they actually found a good name for it and where I want to be heading next is this uh, place here it's uh, not really an island because it's just a river I guess. and I want to go there because this place has no real access I think for cars maybe some motorcycles can get there or this one is gonna go around and get on the island but this island is called Pulo Gudis and the reason I want to see it it's uh, I read about it I didn't even know it exists uh, I read last night about it it's uh, the population density well generally generally the population density here in these parts of Bogor is insanely high in this place here Pulo Gudis is uh, only 3.5 hectares in size and has a population of 2,500 people. So if you do some math, uh, you find out that the population density on one square kilometer would be more than 70,000 people. 70,000 people, that's one of the highest densities in the world. Like there's some places in Manila and uh, like in these highly populated uh, Asian cities, but 70,000 people is more than uh, in Macau, in Monaco, some very developed uh, places, and then you have this little kampung on this tiny island, which is so heavily populated. So I'm gonna go over and try to find a place to eat, I don't know, we'll see how it even looks on that island, and uh, if I even can uh, navigate, find my way through these uh, alleyways and to kind of like go all from uh, here north to south and uh, just discover what it looks like inside. Here I have some visitors here yes, on the yeah. bridge. Yeah. Okay. What's your name? Anas. 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 And you? Ay. Ay. Your name? Jackie. Jackie. Jackie? You? Rino. Rino? Yeah. Yeah, you? Coco. <laughs> Coco? Coco. My name is my name is Dan. Yeah. Dan, nice to meet you. Your name? Chris. Chris. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I meet uh, these nice people here on the bridge here. Uh, what's the name? Uh, this Kampung Labyrinth. Right? Labyrinth. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a nice place here. Nice place. Uh. <laughs> so they all come to see what I'm doing here on the bridge. And you go play soccer, football. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where, where is the soccer field? Here, soccer field. Up there. Yeah, yeah. So they go up there and play soccer. <laughs> okay, okay. Have fun. I go. I have to walk. Uh, okay. Terima kasih. <laughs> So they want to... Okay. <laughs> really cool kids playing soccer. Okay. Mister? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Da, Thank you. Da. Da. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.